10 Amazing Discoveries in Health. 10. Long legs equal colon cancer? The National Cancer Institute's chart says that there were an estimate of about 134,490 new cases of colon and rectal cancer in 2016, which makes up about 8% of all new cancer cases, and about 49,000 plus people died from their cancer. So it's important that researchers and doctors are doing every study and giving every attempt in finding out how to recognize who is more susceptible to getting a certain cancer and why. A study that was done to find out what makes people more susceptible to developing colon colorectal cancer and its results showed that the only linked factor was leg length in men. Men who had the longest legs had a mind-blowing 91% increased risk of getting colorectal cancer than men who had the shortest legs. But women didn't have an identifiable difference in risk according to the statistics. Theories suggest that taller people have larger colons so cancer has an increased amount of tissue to attack. Another theory is that the things that promote bone growth in legs are the risk factors for the disease. More research is needed to be done, but these findings were presented at the American Association for Cancer Research's annual meeting. 9. Virginity and your genes While it's widely believed that social factors play the most important role in when an individual loses their virginity, genes may be just as responsible. The study between the relationship of genes and health outcomes is incredible. 125,000 people participated in the study to help determine what genetics have to do with what age virginity is lost at. The 38 genes that affected what time puberty hits, the level of irritability, and the tendency to take risks are being researched. This research hopefully helps to provide answers as to what biological factors contribute to this stage in life. 8. Cone Snail Insulin is something that has been weaponized by the cone snail. Insulin, if you didn't already know, is the hormone that is there to level out your blood sugar so that it doesn't dip too low or too high. The cone snails use insulin against their prey by using it to make the prey's blood sugar level drop drastically. They will release it into the water and it will be sucked up into the gills of nearby fish causing their demise. The snail will then open up its funnel-shaped mouth and devour the fish. Researchers have been using the snail's venom in a few medications already, but in their screening process they were shocked to find that two snail types, like described above, use insulin. If we can refine the cone snail's insulin, we could develop brand new drugs and treat diabetes. The International Diabetes Federation states that diabetes affects 371 million people worldwide, so finding out that we can create a new and better drug to combat that is incredible. 7. Sea anemones kill cancer We can all recognize what a sea anemone is if you've watched the movie Finding Nemo. They are the weird organisms in the sea that have tentacles, and you can even find clownfish in them sometimes, since the clownfish is immune to their venom located in their tentacles. What's not immune to their venom is human cancer cells. Sea anemones might provide the new answer in making a drug that could destroy cancer cells. Their tentacles contain venom that helps them defend against predators and is their way of capturing prey. Recent research has found that this venom can eliminate lung and breast cancer cells by having the cancerous cells undergo apoptosis. Apoptosis, or programmed cell death, is considered the tidier way to die for cells. Cancer cells' growth was considered seemingly uncontrollable, and the venom from anemones also controls cell cycle procession. Additional research will be done to see if a viable drug can be created based on the venom and its ability to kill the cancer cells inside human bodies rather than in a controlled study in a lab dish. 6. Leprosy in Red Squirrels In November of 2016, researchers in Brownsea Island in England gathered up 25 squirrels and to their horror, all of them carried the oldest known pathogen associated with leprosy. This pathogen was the one responsible for all the disease outbreaks back in medieval Europe. Finding leprosy in squirrels is alarming because that means there is possibly a large number of non-human reservoirs of the pathogen that we didn't realize. A study has begun to find out how and why leprosy is affecting the already threatened squirrels. What can be seen is that it causes squirrels loss of hair and swelling around the ears. Although there's a low chance of a human contracting the disease from a squirrel, we can add red squirrels under the only other known animal to carry the disease. 5. Leech Venom Leech therapy is one of the oldest forms of medicine since humans can remember. Leeches have been used to treat infections, dental problems, skin diseases, and a number of ailments through bloodletting. In more recent times, leeches are being used in microsurgery like plastic surgery. In this photo, you can see a woman getting leech therapy on her face and she could be getting it done for a number of reasons, most likely to treat her acne. Herudin, which is the leech's venom, comes from the creature's salivary glands and when the venom is injected, its effect is stopping blood coagulation and reduces pain. The compounds in the venom could be used for new medical reasons like getting rid of varicose veins or increasing circulation. 
Leeches have been used since ancient times, and because they work, it's time to start finding out what else they can do. 4. Hair loss reversed with arthritis drug. Zelgens, a drug that was originally created for patients with rheumatoid arthritis, has had an exciting and amazing effect on the men who've taken it, specifically men that have gone bald, because more than half of the men in the study that have taken the drug have recovered about 50% of their hair they thought was gone forever. You can see that from the photos taken of people in the study that the results are remarkable. The men didn't grow back an entire head of hair like they had when they were younger, but rather they grew back the appropriate amount of hair for older men their age, who usually have receding hairlines and such. Some hair is better than none to a lot of the patients, because those with alopecia quite often lose their eyebrows and eyelashes along with the hair on the head. Hair loss that drastic can cause people to become more reserved in social situations and lose confidence. The physiology of hair growth is super complicated, but this drug offers insight into new hair loss treatments and provides hope to hair loss patients. 3. Higher Education and Brain Tumors Gliomas, which are a type of cancerous brain tumor, might be more likely to develop in people with higher levels of education. In a study, results showed that men were 19% more likely to develop a glioma when they had completed at least three years of university courses than men who didn't go to a university at all. Women had an even more drastic percentage. Of the women in the study, 23% of them who had completed three or more years of university developed a glioma. Before this scares you away from going to university and reaching high into education, know that a possible explanation as to why the results turned out this way is because of the awareness factor. When more highly educated people are affected with certain things, they are more conscious of certain symptoms and go to receive medical care much earlier than those who might not know what to look for. So the ones who go to receive treatment are the ones who are going to get diagnosed rather than the ones who don't know what to keep an eye out for before it's too late. 2. Heart attacks and high rises. Living at the top of a high rise might suggest a certain wealth along with a great view of your city, but it could also mean that you are in great danger. If you have a medical history that makes you more prone to cardiac arrest, that is. A five-year study about people whose hearts stopped beating while on higher floors of a building opposed to those on lower floors were unlikely to survive. A dreary 1% of people on the 16th floor of a building survived, and not one person who was on the 24th and above survived. These results make it clear that the biggest delays in getting to cardiac arrest patients are things like locked lobby doors, building height, a complex building layout, and no no escort that could have made reaching the patient sooner. When a person goes into cardiac arrest, time is not on their side. Only patients who receive care right away have a higher chance of living through it. 1. Benefits of drinking beer. It's time to drink up. Well, at least if you want to increase your ability to recognize emotions such as happiness, that is. Drinking beer affects the processing of emotional social information, and there's science to back that up. It's not just a myth that alcohol is a social lubricant. Beer makes a person have more of a desire to spend time with other people than those who have had no alcoholic beverages. A study was conducted with 60 patients, one half who drank 17 ounces of alcoholic beer, and the other half who drank the same amount of non-alcoholic beer. The ones who had the alcoholic beer were much more efficient in recognizing people's faces that express expressed happiness. They were also given an empathy test and a sexual arousal test. When people think about the hormone that is associated with happiness and bonding with other people, we think about oxytocin. What was interesting was that beer didn't affect the levels of oxytocin, so it suggests that beer's effect on the brain lies elsewhere. <laughs>